welcome. This is a quick and dirty tutorial on how to use Heeks CNC to generate toolpaths uh, for CNC milling uh, based on a CAD model. Now, I'm not an expert by any means, but I'll show you how it works for me. Now, um, my first step is to import my CAD model, which was made in SolidWorks. Um, the way I do this is I go to File, Import, and I've tried several different formats, but only iGIS actually works. One problem with iGIS is it just imports a bunch of faces. It's not a solid, like they're not all linked. So um, in order to do any transformations or modifications, you have to select all of the faces. So I go in the object browser in the upper left, scroll down to the end, hold down shift, click the last face, and that's what it takes to select my entire object. Now SolidWorks likes to use a different coordinate system than all the cam software I demoed. Um, when I set up my machining, the origin is at the um, stock closest to me on my left when I'm facing my machine, and the zero for the Z is on top of the stock. That way I can move the machine so that the end mill is touching the top of the stock, and that's my zero. Um, there's better ways to do it, but um, for my purposes, that's sufficient. But as you can see, my model is in the wrong orientation, uh, where it's pretty much its width is along the Z. So I need to do a transformation or two here. I can go to Transform, uh, Move Rotate, and I always use Other, Rotate around the X, and by 90 degrees. Oh, look at that. It's in the correct orientation. Unfortunately, my origin for my Z is not at the top of my stock, so I need to do a translate. I have to reselect all these faces. Kind of annoying, but that's what it is. Um, transform, and then move translate. Here's one tip. Heeks CNC likes to make you use the mouse to reposition stuff, which is not very accurate. So I always just use the input on the left side here. I start by zeroing everything so that my starting point is zero. And you have to actually click enter in each of these fields for it to take. Otherwise, you may have typed something, but it'll ignore you. So I've zeroed everything, and now I hit accept. OK, where am I moving to? Well, my piece is half an inch thick, so I need to actually shift it in the z-axis by half an inch. So I'm going to enter negative 0.5 and click enter there. Now. Except, oh, look at that. My origin is in the right spot. All right. Well, I'm not going to do this whole model, but um, I'll show you uh, at least a pocket operation and a profile. There's a few operations you can do machining. You can do profiling, which does one cut around the outside or inside of something. A pocket operation, which um, does a lot of um, concentric cuts to completely cut out a pocket. You can also do drilling and tapping, which are totally obvious, um, but I'm not going to do this for now. Let's do a let's do a pocket. Uh, actually, why don't we just do a profile really quickly around the inside through cut? Um, before we can add that, we actually need to take the, all of these faces um, and make a sketch. So you can only do uh, operations on sketches, and since this imported model is faces, it's not going to work. But there's a quick way to do that. You can right click on any face. Go to face and make a sketch from face. OK, it's hard to see because the lines are black. I can select this sketch and change the color of it so that it's something more visible. But basically, there we go. I've got an outline of that face. Um, to do the inner cut, I actually only need this inner square. How do I do that? I can expand the sketch in the object browser. By the way, let's rename it to something. How about like inner through profile? And I can select each individual item and figure out what it is. It gets highlighted. Um, I know, by the way, that the last four lines here are actually in my middle. So I'm going to take all of these other items and shift select them, right click, delete. I click and select my sketch. I can do machining, add new milling operation, profile operation, 
and uh, some things pop up with the dialog, others don't, and then you have to use the properties in the lower left to set the properties. Um, there's just a few for the profile that I use. Uh, tool on side. For this inner cut, it's going to be on the inside, whereas for an outer cut, it would be on the outside. Um, only other three other important parameters. There's the start depth, which is going to be zero, and the final depth. I have a half-inch piece, so I'm going to do just a little bit more um, just to go all the way through into my spoil board, which is underneath my workpiece. Step down um, is how many steps it'll take to, to go into the material. I'm using plastic, so a half inch is totally fine. Um, there's a few things, well, for some reason it always sets the horizontal feed rate really silly. Um, I use 30 for plastic. For, um, for vertical feed rate, I use five. That's slow enough that the machine won't crash into the table if I make a mistake. And spindle speed 3000 seems to work for plastic. Um, tool. I didn't define any tools, and it's got this weird tool. Let's define a tool, because I'm using a 3 8 inch end mill. I can go to the tools in the object browser, right click, do new end mill, and uh, expand the tools. Oh, look, it automatically created a half inch end mill. So I'm going to select it. And I'm going to go in. There's two things I need to edit. The diameter, which in for a 3 8 inch is 0.375. I don't know why I have to enter it in as a decimal when it automatically shows up as fractional here. But anyway, then two length offset. I use zero. Um, if you use the method I do of tapping the end mill against the top of the workpiece, use zero. Uh, there are much better ways to do it if you want to rapidly change tools, but I'm going to use one tool for everything, so I don't care. Everything else, I can leave the same. That said, let's go back to my sketch. Here's my sketch. Uh, let's see. I added... Did I already add my profile? Yeah, I did add my profile. There's my profile. Let's change the tool it was using, because it was using something weird that I don't have. Where are you? Tool. 3 8 inch. Now, I can generate some G-code. I do that by clicking this Go. It's actually G0. Does some stuff. And there it is. You can see... Oh, there's something stupid there. Let's see. I'll show you. So red are rapid moves. Green is cutting moves. So you can see... This looks pretty much right. This uh, rapid move looks a little uh, close to the... <laughs> workpiece to be safe. Um, how do we do change that? We can go click on the profile and let's there was a there was a rapid clearance. Let's see in here there is rapid safety space. Um, it's pretty small. I'm gonna do a half an inch. And um, while I'm at it actually clearance height. I don't know what the difference is. I'm just gonna set them to both 0.5. There was something else. Was there anything else? Did, 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 did? I think that's it. Yeah, yeah, okay, let's try that again. By the way, do you see the sketch ID here? This references which sketch, because each sketch has an ID um, that, that the cut is associated with. So you can see this has an ID of one. You can actually comma, you can, you can use commas to refer to multiple sketches. Let's do G0 and generate the code again. Oh, uh, yeah. Still not coming out right. Well, let's see what's going on here. One nice thing with the output window is you can click on a row, and Heeks will show you what's going on there in terms of... I see what's wrong. It'll highlight what's going on. For some reason, this sucker is starting... G0 is a rapid move, and it's not setting a z-axis, so it's starting at, 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 at 0. So Actually, this is kind of the way I assemble things. I, you can select all of this code and use Notepad. And uh, I don't use the direct output from Heeks. I copy and paste into Notepad so that I can make some fixes because it does stupid things like this. Um, so, And every time you generate the code, it rewrites all of it. So I actually want to start off with a rapid move to let something, I don't know, safe, let's say one inch. I can 